everybody, welcome to Primetime Kitchen's How Tuesday, episode 26. I am Jim Colbert. I will be cooking for you tonight. I hope you enjoy it. My wife is here as well. Her name is Tori. She's right back there. Hey, nobody's on yet. So. Nobody's on. That's fine. Uh, and tonight we're making chicken pot pie. One of probably the most underrated, undermade fall dishes that you can make. Everybody goes to chili and stews and big thick soups and stuff. Man, chicken pot pie could not be easier to make. And actually, we're going to make it with puff pastry and not pie pastry tonight. Because I think the puff pastry kind of perks up, looks real nice in the bowl, and that uh, looks good. And you can see we're using these crocs that you would usually use to do French onion soup, which you can use just fine. Actually, any oven-safe bowl that you can bake in is going to be easy. And really, it's, it's, the, the, it's root vegetables. It's onions, it's garlic, it's carrots. We're going to put some green peas in there for a little sweetness. Some yellow mustard, a little bit of cream. Mustard. Some, uh, mustard. Yeah, a little bit of mm. yellow mustard. Oh, oh no. Lord. Well, you Touching. Know, spicy mustard. It's good, though. Oh. Works. me. <laughs> Is that grateful, huh? No, would you have any grateful? Would you have any grateful? I'm it's not Kendrick. Kind of like I don't have any great pot, so. <laughs> uh, and it is, you know, it's not like a heavy dish because honestly, you could use half and half instead of heavy cream. But if you wanted that really good, rich broth, we're going to use a little bit of heavy cream. Of course, as we're uh, working tonight, you want to like and share the video. Now, this thing takes like 25, 30 minutes or so to cook as it gets the puff pastry up nice and brown. You're, you're in the, the, the actual pot pie part, the inside of it, like the good stuff. That's kind of cooked already. You're just reheating this and cooking the pastry on top. So while that's happening, we're going to do a Q&A. Uh, we've never done one. You know, I know a lot of the guys from the show and a lot of guys from the radio station do the Q&As. And we're going to take some questions for you guys and talk about the new show coming up Fridays, uh, 3 to 7. Our first show is January 5th. Myself, Deb Roberts, Ross Padgett, and, of course, Jack Bradshaw. We're going to talk about Primetime Kitchen coming up in 2018. Exciting. What we have going on there. Chili Cook-Off is coming up in a little bit. You can see us cooking out there. We're going to have the Primetime Kitchen step and repeat up. We're going to take some pictures and we're going to serve some awesome chili. I don't know what I'm going to make yet, but we'll figure it out. It'll be good, I promise. Okay, so what are you drinking? Oh, tonight we have something really cool. I have to pull the uh, bottle out of the trash here <laughs> because I accidentally threw it away. So this is the Victory Brewing Golden uh, Monkey, which is their triple Belgian ale. Yeah. And I said a few weeks ago, I've been on a Belgian ale kick. Yeah. And even when my boy and I were out playing trivia last night uh, at Bear and Peacock, which is an awesome little spot there. They make all their beers there, and you can only get them on tap. They have a Belgian ale that is really, really good. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were drinking that last night. So I'm on this kind of kick, so we're drinking that tonight. What's my wine? What Your wine, wine is this Kendall Jackson. I'm back on the wine train, guys. Yeah, it's actually a pretty good bottle of wine for like $19. It's a little bitter up front, but it's okay. you yeah. got to choke it down. It's not as cherry juicy as a lot of Pinots, not as sweet. But, hey, uh, Andrea. That's a good wine. Uh, hey, Andrea, what's up? And like I said, we're just going to make this dish, and it's going to be awesome, and we want you to make it uh, throughout the holidays. Uh, I know everybody has a lot of bunch of parties coming up and whatnot. Uh, and this is, again, this is one of those great dishes. We talk about cooking with the family a lot. Uh, my daughters are actually behind us right now. Taylor just got in from Seattle today. She's the Air Force child that we talk about on the air and my other daughter Aubrey who's really just really kind of a dumpster that she just she just just collects random metal and sells it for a living but uh, but uh, she uh, they're both here tonight and you know these are dishes like we used to make in the kitchen together we'd you'd get in and we'd kind of make stuff together and this is one of those dishes I think that are kind of fun because you get the pie, pastry and the kids can cut it and the inside of it the actual pot pie is like really easy to make so let's get started what do you say towards that cool it's cool it's cool episode did i put episode 25 rodney i think it's episode 26 it is 26 maybe jimmy said 25. so we have about a third of a cup of butter here we're gonna blame it on him what it, it turns out to be probably about i don't know probably about I don't know, three tablespoons something like that so what are we starting here we're gonna go ahead and melt this butter okay all right because we're gonna um we're gonna chop some onions so we start out this dish with sauteing the onions in uh and and uh, and the garlic. Yeah. And believe it or not, a lot of uh, pot pie dishes don't actually include the garlic in there. We don't not put garlic in everything. We don't not. No. We don't not. We don't not. So we like to get this onion pretty chopped up. You want it relatively uniform because again, you don't want you, you want your bites to be kind of uniform. You don't want big burly chunks of onion. That's my problem with chili. Like when you put tomatoes in chili, if I get a big chunk of tomato, whoop. Yeah, but you gotta remember, tomato is like the base of chili, man. Wow. You gotta have that in there. Yes. Mm -mm. Don't say no. Mm -hmm. Don't say no. Okay, that's about an onion. That's probably about a cup. I want to do about a cup and a half. 
Okay. Because we're making enough for four. And again, all you have to do. Oh, Kevin said, did he say his son was a co-host? No. No. <laughs> Gotta be really funny. To make this for four, and when I put the recipe up tomorrow, you basically are just gonna, you know, just double this thing and make a bunch of it. Cause it this actually sits really well. Cause all you have to do is take it out of the fridge and make your, um, uh, do your puff pastry or pie pastry, put it on top and you've got a brand new fresh. So where are we gonna do How Tuesday next week? We're not. And we're probably not gonna do How Tuesday until? Well, we may do it the week of New Year's just to do something with lamb. Because believe it or not, there are a lot of people out there that like to do lamb for New Year. So we may do a leg of lamb or maybe a, re a lamb loin and do something cool like that. The and onion is killing me. Yeah, the onion is <laughs> really, oh, really, meat. really strong tonight. I, you don't like lamb though, right? I'm not a big fan of lamb, but I, you know, the funny thing is, is I can make it and show people how to make it. Okay. Because it's really not that difficult to make. Now these carrots, you can see they're like organic carrots. I'm going to split them because I don't like big carrot pieces. And I cannot lie. Those other brothers you other just can't, deny. can't deny. When a girl walks in with the in her own thing in your face, you, you get, get sprung. Uh, so we're going to cut these down a little bit. Make sure we have knots, vegetables. You know, basically this is a chicken stew under a pot, under a piece of bread. Why are you using that knife? Oh, just because I have uh, my other ones. In, huh? Well, my other ones in the thing. I, I don't look. This is a handful knife. This is a good starter knife. You don't have to have a super expensive knife to be in this. I kind of feel like you do. You do. I feel like my meal is now less. <laughs> you, feel like, you feel like it's not going to taste as good? Correct. That sounds. Uh, what's the word? Bougie. Uh, well. There's another one there. I am a bit bougie at times. You're not bougie at all. I'm not. I wish I was. So we're going to go ahead and put everything in there. A lot of people are like, why are you putting that garlic in there with everything? It's not going to be right. It's going to overcook. It's not. None of these people are saying that. Yeah. Now, a couple things we can learn tonight. Pretty yeah. easy. So when you're building these creamy dishes like this, a lot of people are like, well, what does it matter? You're going to let's put everything in all at once. You don't want to do that. The green peas are actually going to go in when I put the milk in and build the sauce with this roux. That's how you get it to be thick like a gravy and soupy and stuff. You don't put herbs in early. You don't put these vegetables in early. They go in last because you don't want the green peas to break down and turn it. You want to be nice and bright and plump. Crunchy. Like and it'll give you a little pop. pop. Yeah, a little pop. And if you put them in now, mm -hmm. they're going to take all the water out of them. They're going to cook them off. You're going to turn this dark color. It's going to be terrible. You want nice, green, bright peas. That's why these carrots are in here. You're going to get that nice, great, bright orange. And it's going to look exactly like photographs. I promise. And what are we cooking again? We're doing chicken pot pie with a puff pastry top. We're not doing okay. We're not doing the pie crust. And what are you drinking again? I'm drinking uh, this uh, Golden Monkey from Victory Brewing. Yeah. It's a triple Belgian. That's what, does that look? Like? No, it's not actually. Oh, never mind. I lied to everybody. Everybody was like, are you triple? I was <laughs> no. like, yes, yes. You know, please. honestly, I just didn't have time to get local today because we've been dealing with house stuff. So, uh, I why? What's apology. happening? Oh, we sold on? the house. We did. Yeah, Oliver Brothers sold it for us in 15 days for cash. <laughs> Um, <laughs> super happy about that. Um, this is two chicken breasts that have been cubed. Use as much as you need. Uh, and, and basically, we just got chicken breasts. You saute them off. Get them done. You can throw them in the oven if you want. Cool them down. Hold on. I gotta ask up. a question. Yeah. Didn't, did you keep the juice from the, the chicken in your cast iron when you added the butter? Okay. Or did you clean that out? I did not. I cleaned it out. Oh, okay. And I'll tell you why. The cast iron is hard to toss my veggies with. Okay. And I want to be able to toss this. And it's only because I'm a weak little man. Well, it is kind of, it's heavy, baby. It's heavy. Corey. It's so heavy. Corey, here's what I don't need from you. It's, I don't need, whoa, slow, 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 slow. I don't need you making strength judgments. Scrape. Scrape. Strength. Hey. <laughs> I don't need you making strength judgments. That frying pan weighs 30 pounds. I don't you, think so. I, you saw me earlier, like episode three, I flipped a big sweet potato hash in that thing. I did it too. You did not. You threw it on my foot and no. it burned the top of my foot off. It was my foot. Stop making lies. That was good acting though, right? Mm. No. That is so delicious. Okay, so they want to know if you're taking over the three o'clock spot. Uh, well. We can't answer right now. We but, have to wait until the chicken no. pot pies in. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So once we put the chicken pot pie in the oven, which is going to be a few minutes from now, we will sit and drink and talk to you guys and wait for this chicken pot pie to get done. Yeah. And then that's the show. And then we'll tee it back up. We were going to do something between now and then, but we like we're never we've never done like a, a Q and A uh, questions about 
like what's coming up in the future and whatnot. I'm drinking my truth juice. Oh God! No, you have to. Keep you know what that there. means? No, I do. Oh, that means yeah. that means you got to shut up. Already got blocked one time right. this week. No, stop it. <laughs> you need to shut up. Your bad news. Your bad news all the way around. So we do have some fresh time. You see my little uh, my little uh, espresso glass. Which do you is have too awesome. much time on your hands? <laughs> it was terrible. Thank you. I appreciate your input. So that's about a tablespoon of fresh organic pot, uh, thyme. Tablespoon? Tablespoon. What is, which is wrong with your tongue tonight? Which is delicious. My gosh, it smells so good. Chicken and thyme go perfect together. White wine goes with that. Every great chicken savory thing is perfect with thyme. And that's fresh, organic, nice big leaves. And that's just going to explode. The second this hits this sauce, yeah. you're going to smell it just effervesce. It's going to be great. I think it's going to be pretty amazing. So you can see a lot of that butter, but you got to remember, the reason there's so much butter in this pan right now is because that's what we're going to use to make our roux. Okay. And that's what's going to thicken our sauce up. You'll see it happen pretty quickly. This actually is going to come together pretty good. And we actually forgot to put our mushrooms in, but it won't really matter. We're going to put a few in there. You don't really like these, do you? I, I okay. I will eat a little bit of a mushroom, but I don't, I don't want big old chunky mushrooms. Yeah, but do you not want them in there or not? I, I'm not judging your food. I'll eat whatever, obviously. Okay. But, you know. Um, not big chunks. Those are big chunks. Stop. God, will you stop? Let me just chop them up. My God, what is wrong with you? Just let me do my thing. Oh. I agree. He is abusive. <laughs> Nobody said that. Hashtag me too. Hashtag I resigning. Hashtag me too. Hashtag... Um, I'm out at the ESPN. Hashtag, I got a substance problem. Katrina said I'm the best, and you are terrifying. Who said that? That's what happened. Who said that? I'm not telling you. Yeah, because you're lying. You're bully them. You're lying. I'm not going to bully anybody. Mushrooms fine going in a little bit late because they cook in their time. And they'll cook. <laughs> you got to remember, this is going to cook 30 minutes in the oven. Yeah. So this will start boiling up. But we do want these carrots soft. That's... That's why we're not too soft. Do we want a little bit of a tooth? Yeah, but you, but the thing is, you don't, you don't want it like too bad. Well, because if not, you know what happens. Uh, they they'll get mushy. You don't want to do that. Yeah. Okay. Pour a little bit. Um, let me put a little bit more butter in there. Okay. Because I want my roux to be good. Okay. And mushrooms, really, when you work with mushrooms, mushrooms soak up butter like crazy. That's yeah. why they taste so good when you get them done because they've soaked You're up so much You're making your butter. stuffed mushrooms for the Christmas dinner on Saturday for the family dinner, right? Yeah, I think so. Is that what everybody wants? Well. Yes. Yeah, what do you want? <laughs> a filet. No. How much steak do we eat on that cruise? Oh, uh, we are so fatty. I, I think I started growing a horn. Just out of this side, I ate so much steak. What? Oh, man. That's a different one. Oh, like and share, guys? <laughs> your motorcycle papa. Get your motor running. Head out on the highway. Head out on the highway. We're making chicken pot pie. This is a cooking show. Open your mouth. No. Open it. Tori, I'm not. Do it. Tori, I'm not. Get away from me. Seriously, get, 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 <laughs> get. A little bit of all-purpose flour. Yeah. You're making a roux. Yeah. So everybody know what a roux is? Everybody? Okay. Everybody know what a roux is? So this is about two tablespoons of flour. We're not going to use that much. Okay. You don't want to use too much. Okay, because then you have to add so much liquid that you have like so much. Stuff in your It'll get pasty. Yeah. Oh my god, so, you are so exciting right now. Why am I excited? Because you have like Starburst and stuff behind. Why? Who's giving me Starburst? My favorite candy, by the way. Starburst is. It used to be. Man, who didn't like Starburst? Who didn't like Starburst? Seriously. Like and share, guys. Like and share if you don't mind. We appreciate that very much. So we're going to just get this. You can see how that flour already starts binding up. That flour already starts kind of binding up and you can see it kind of clumping together. Yeah. What's happening is the flour is sticking, everything has butter on it. Yep. And then we're just going to cook that for a minute. The last thing you want to do is not cook the flour because you have to. Because if not, flour will have this raw flavor when you make your sauce. Like a powdery. Like a, it's right? just impossible to explain. It's mm -hmm. like a raw flour flavor, which mm -hmm. you don't want. So just cook it a little bit. And that's why I sprinkle it on, because you, you're, the vegetables are still cooking. Yeah. So you're, you're still going through the cooking process of cooking the veggies. Uh -huh. So you add your flour about maybe four minutes before you know you're going to make the rest of your sauce and stuff. Okay. That way your flour gets done, your veggies are done all at the same time, and that way we can put our chicken stock and our cream in. 
get that to the consistency we want. Yeah. Throw in our mustard, our thyme, and our chicken. Stir it up, and we start. Then we start crock potting it up. Then we start answering questions super honestly. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. I can't wait. Yeah. Let's go. Let's get there. So you can see these onions are done. The garlic is done. This has a delicious smell already. Let's put a little bit of salt in there. Okay. The initial salt is. Oh. Let's take that part right there. Nice and moving on. Once we get all the cream and stuff in there, we good. Oh man, you got a little crazy there. Nice one. Again, we're going to add a lot of water to this. We're going to add cream to it, so don't need salt. We're going to get the um, pepper in there. He said roux or bechamel. Well, bechamel is made from roux. Bechamel is one of the mother sauces, so bechamel is the sauce, which is basically what you know as white gravy. You uh -huh. know, and back in the day, it's a roux with white milk or yeah. roux milk, and that turns into that beautiful creamy sauce. That's the base for all cheese sauces. So you'll make a roux, butter and flour, okay. cook it real nice, add your milk, get it real creamy, really work it good. And then start adding cheese. And that's how you make cheese sauces. Oh, okay. Uh, how green should chicken get before you throw it away? Oh, man. <laughs> None. <laughs> Let it rip. Yeah. Why throw it? Here's it. <laughs> All right. So, organic chicken stock and it matters. Okay. All right. How much is this? That's probably about a cup to start with. We're going to see how much, we're going to see how much thickening power we have. Okay. I feel like you have a lot of thickening power. <laughs> Can I tell you, the cruise ship we just came on off of has a lot of thickening power. Happy Cause, holidays. Cause I got thick. It's okay. You only you only got a couple pounds thick. Tori. You did, baby. How many pounds thick did you get? Like I, thick. I, I, like like fat. Like P H A T. I gained nine pounds on the cruise. Woo! Nine pounds. You know what that is? Judging. You know what that is? Not good. That is taking the elevator instead of the stairs. Right. All right. So we have this going right here. Yeah. A little cream. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Say wee wee. Wee wee. All right. Thank you. Now, you can see already as that cooks and boils, it's already starting to thicken up. Okay. And we're now we're starting to get the, the stereotypical look of the inside of a chicken pot pie. Now, how thick do we want this to get before? Well, I mean, I don't want it too thick, but the cool thing is I can just keep adding chicken stock. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I can honestly just keep adding stock until I... Yeah, like, but James said that you can do cornstarch. Yeah, you can do cornstarch. You're 100% right. You can make a slurry and do cornstarch. I like this old style, the old flour style, because that way I can work it as I go. Cornstarch, I find, yeah. binds up a little fast. There's not much working room for cornstarch. When yeah. you start when you just, it, it's like thick, you know, with yeah. flour, you can kind of build it, build it, right. and get it exactly how you want. So we're going to throw in a little bit of our mustard. Okay. Our herbs. How much mustard? We're going to about a, I don't know, a teaspoon or so. Did you put in the thyme? I did. How much thyme did you put in? Um, tablespoon. Don't put in too much thyme. Come on, man. I'm begging you to stop. Thank you. Okay, so now, see it? See when I pull that across, how it stays? Yep. Okay. We want a little bit more stock. We don't want that right now. Because we want to cook this out. Wait, you just confused me. You said we want a little bit more stock. Yeah, we don't want that right now. No, look, look, we don't want that. You were that. like that crackhead I saw at the 7-Eleven <laughs> the other day. We don't want that right now. We want that. Oh, gosh. Smell that already. It looks so good. Seriously. Babe, that looks so good. I'm so proud of you. We've Chicken? never made this before. Chicken? <laughs> A lot of the stuff we've never made before. We're going to pull some uh, curly parsley. <sighs> Just a little bit, not much. Do you and want I, I love parsley. I love it, love it, love it. it gives you do. You put it everywhere. Beautiful, earthy flavor. So, um... Now, look. We already have our chicken in there. And you can see, look at the stock. Again, look at the stock there. See how it's kind of... Now, the, again, let's go back to the flour thing. I'm glad that guy asked... I know. A little bit crazy. crazy. I'm glad that guy asked that question about the thickening thing. Because that's okay. super... It's really kind of important. Okay, so the reason we cook with flour instead of cornstarch, yeah, and I've used cornstarch and I like it. It's great. It's a good saver. By the way, a slurry uh -huh. is like if let's say if you're making a chicken dish, yeah. a little bit of chicken stock, cornstarch, mix it up real nice, and as you add it, add it a little at the time because when it starts to boil, it's going to bind up fast. It's going to go crazy. Right, but you can see how I can almost push it around. I want a little bit more sauce than that, Tori. So I'm going to add again. I'm going to add a little bit more stock. Okay. Because we're not making one big. 
chicken pot pie. No, no, no. We're doing four little babies. Ramekin. Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. So everybody's going to get, when you serve this out, everybody's going to get about a carrot. Yeah. Half an onion. Yeah. You're going to get about a three quarters breast of a chicken. Yeah. And then, of course, you're going to get the puff pastry. Would you say time keeps on slipping? Whoever said that should be slipping. burned at the stake. Slipping. Whoever said that should be burned. Into your future, baby. Taste. Because it tastes good. Too much salt? Because you dumped a bunch in. <laughs> mm. <laughs> That's really good. How crazy is that? Yeah. Okay. We're going to call that good right there. Yep. I'm going to let that cook a little bit more. So, we're going to ladle this in. Okay. By the way, we have your stereotypical junk drawer. That's not a junk drawer. <laughs> like, no, no, what I'm That's saying. A I have drawer. 42 wooden spoons, 16 whisks, four ladles. I, I, how many tongs? I think I have like 19 sets of tongs. Don't worry, baby. Time is on your side. I'm begging you to stop doing that. It's I'm okay. No, it's not. I'm begging you to stop. Are we cool? We're good. Can we stop? We can. Is it gonna stop? Probably. You, what do I look like right now, no. wizard? Am I the fire breathing wizard? No. Am I Mr. Bowling Ball Head? Do I have dice for eyes? No. <laughs> All right. So, this is good. Let's get the test taste to Test taste? Babe, you are dyslexic tonight or something. Are we giving it to the people? I don't know that the people want me to film them. Uh -uh. So we're going to keep it right here. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm giving you time to calm down. I swear to God, whoever's doing that is causing you to look really bad. Okay. Or you to look crazy. Either one. That's fine. So do it one ladle at a time. <laughs> you did it and didn't even know it. Um, James said you didn't put any pastry on the bottom. No, I didn't. Was that a mess up? No. Or? Oh, okay. There's a bunch of ways to make this dish. I don't put pastry on the bottom. I, I like extra pastry. And these dishes are a little deep, a little bit heavier, but that'll be fine because I'm going to put the pastry right on the top. Okay. Very okay, good. Yeah. Okay. Now. It's good. Oh my god. I forgot the green peas. Here's what I'm gonna do. This is look, this is a real cooking show. You oh, Jorge stuff. just said peas? Question yeah. mark? So. And everybody's saying you should have put pastry on the bottom. Yeah, that's fine. They can say that all they want. <laughs> now the cool thing about these green peas, and you got, these are not gonna take long to get going. So we can take them, mix them right in there. Yep. Mix them right in. Okay. They're gonna cook. They're gonna be fine. Should have made a lot more than this for. Yeah. Ooh, I know. No worries. Somebody, All right. Somebody's not gonna go hungry. <laughs> so let's get a little flour on our surface here. Okay. I've not worked with puff pastry a lot. Well, this will be fun. You'll do good, baby. You always little, do good. It's a little feisty. Okay. Little feisty. Again, guys, if you like uh, the videos, like and share. It helps us out. Um, after the new year, we may be going to, what is that thing called? Twitch. Twitch. We may be going to Twitch. We don't know yet. We're going to figure it out. We're going to figure out if we're going to do YouTube live videos or Facebook. Facebook just makes it super easy, of course. So that I can sit here and read your super funny puns. Yes. Yeah. And boy, have they been killing tonight. <laughs> okay, so. They're you, worried about the peas not cooking in time. They're going to cook in time. I promise they will. They're fine. Got a 400 degree oven. They're going to cook. So we have puff pastry. I, what I did beforehand. Yeah. Because I figured out about what covers that. Oh. I use that to cut it you. out. It's pre-planning. We're going to put it right on top like that. Now, if we wanted to, we could push that down in there. You got to remember, the whole idea of this thing is how it looks. It doesn't really have to be down in there because when it puffs up, we can push it down in there. Well, can we put one down in there? Just to see what it looks like? To see what it looks like. Yeah. Okay. And are we gonna, are you gonna put some like egg wash on the top to make it shiny? Yeah, you put a little butter in there too. Have a sheen. Yeah. Thanks, James. The countertops are sold, so we like them too. 
Who's, who are you uh, hollering at? He was telling me that he likes the countertops. Oh my gosh, do you know what I saw on um, Facebook? If you like cut these, we can do little um, little things on top. Like you can you can do like little leaves and stuff. Oh yeah, you can do whatever you want. This, by the way, this is the same pastry we were gonna use to make those really awesome uh, little things that uh, uh, like the little, uh, I think they call them panna cottis or whatever. It's like the little square or little uh, triangles where you put like ricotta cheese, garlic, spinach, salt, pepper. That sounds delicious. And a little bit of provolone, mm -hmm. smoked provolone or whatever mm -hmm. in there. And you just kind of fold them over, make these little squares, then and bake these? them off. Yeah, little squares. Like our little, like you do that. DJ, James has been listening since 92.93. Who's James who? James What's... Curtis. Oh, wow. That's cool, dude. Thank you. Appreciate that very much. All right, so we're going to go ahead and do all these on the top like this. Except Actually. one. I want to put it down. I feel like it needs to be oh, yeah, down. I already did it. Okay. Like okay. that. We did two up, two down. All right. Oh. What? Two up, two down. Let's do a little, do a little egg wash. Okay. So you need a bowl? Yeah. Okay. So what else is going on out there, guys? Do these chicken pot pies, chicken pot pies. You have your little silicone like yeah, brush? Yep, right here. Oh, <laughs> what is wrong with you tonight? You are like Maybe. high gear. Guys, get your questions ready because we're about to put these in and we are going to start answering questions. So we need to brush that down. These yep. already are floured real nice. You want to let these sit out for about 40 minutes before you start cooking, but you don't want them to get too, um, too done or too uh, thought out because they they become unruly. Yeah. So you want to work with them as as well as you can when they're in that perfect. If you want to get them cold again, it's like we're gonna put that one right in. They're All asking right. if you don't feel well. No, I feel fine. 400 degree oven. Okay. And we're gonna do that for how long? I think we're gonna do that for about probably 25, 30 minutes. Oh man, that's and, a lot of questions. Until the <laughs> well, well, or until the pastry looks brown and I can sell that it's done. How's that? We'll, we'll, we'll okay, that. yeah, that's fine. All right, so let me throw this away. We'll get we'll get started. Okay, well, while you're doing that, I'll start asking questions. Jim, can you recommend a decent chef's knife for an average home cook? Okay, so I will, that's a great question. I'll tell you exactly what I, so Tori kind of ragged on me a little bit about using this. I didn't, I just said you have better, so. Well, better's all relative. So this is my, wow. one of my first Hinkle knives. And you can see the, look at the logo right there. It says Hinkle. Now you look at the top of this knife, how kind of thick and broad it is. It's yeah. a heavier knife. It stays nice and sharp. It does. It's good steel, but you can tell the difference between it. And it's a nice sturdy knife. This is good for deboning. You can break down, uh, you know, pork, beef, whatever you want. Yeah. It's also very well balanced. I actually love this knife. And it, the problem with this knife compared to like my Shun knives, this just doesn't hold a really sharp edge as long as my Shun knife does. And the Shun knife. Now this is probably about forty dollars. The Shun knife is like one hundred and forty. Okay. Okay. But Hinkle steel is good. There's also Vustoff, uh, spelled W-U-S-T-O-F-F, -F, I believe, whatever. Uh, and you can get those at Bed Bath & Beyond. You can get all this at Bed Bath & Beyond. You don't have to go to Williams, Sonoma and pay those crazy prices. You can go to Bed Bath and you'll be fine. You can also find these things at estate sales. Just look for the good brands. Just look for that. Don't buy anything bad. You know, people are like, well, what about Chicago cutlery? I've had a Chicago cutlery knife before and the handle fell off and it would not stay sharp for me. I had to sharpen it like literally every day. So I like these knives because they stay nice and sharp and I actually have three Hinkles and two and two shoes and I like them. Okay, cool. Yeah, good starter knives. Let's see. Oh, they are coming in like crazy. And now. I'm drinking this uh, this great uh, Victory Belgian Triple. It's delicious. Um, Jim, sausage gravy or bacon gravy? Will there be an episode for either of them? Oh, you oh, know what? That's, let, I can teach how to make gravy. Gravy's no, easy. Well, let them know what, like, how we're going to do How Tuesdays. So we think that next year, um, in 2018, we're going to start doing technique instead of dinners. Well, we're, we're not, not gonna, all the time. Yeah, we're not going to do because we don't want the show to be an hour. We like the show to be like 35, 40 minutes or so, which means we can come in and make a dish like we're making tonight. You know, answer some questions, do some cool stuff. I just want this show to be like as much interactive as possible. I don't want to just 
me f going crazy cooking and like nothing personally happening. Right. So we're gonna do more of that. Uh, and if you'll notice, the show last year for the uh, last week for the chili was like 35 minutes. We love it. This show today is gonna be like 35, 40 minutes. Yeah. And we're not gonna do too many things at one time. That way we can draw out. We can do more shows for you guys, and we won't run out of material. Okay, yeah, that sounds good. Jimmy, four of my six daughters are watching with me. Love to cook together. Thanks, man. That's awesome. Um, um, let's talk about your next adventure. Uh, so um, I, I think I can say the name. We were gonna do uh, a rollout, and we still are gonna do. We're gonna do a couple of things. So the show is gonna be called the Jim Colbert Show. Yeah. It's gonna be me, Deb Roberts. Yep. Ross Paget. And it's going to be Jack Bradshaw. It's going to be Fridays, 3 to 7. So Jim Jim Phillips works from Monday through Friday. We take the show over on Fridays, 3 to 7 in 2019. The plan is that we go full time. And we're also going to do encore shows. That's mm -hmm. what they're going to be called. New Junkie calls them secret shows where the content can be a little bit more uh, adult. We're going to call them encore shows. Same staff handling a little edgier stuff that we can't do on the air. Uh, where we can kind of be ourselves a little bit more in a controlled environment where we won't get in trouble by the FCC. And you can look forward to that as well. I mean, literally from the day we start, we're going to have those encore shows. The promo up. shots are going to be amazing. We, did a, <laughs> we had a bunch of inf ins uh, inspiration for the promo shots, which we did Sunday night, and we had a blast just kind of trying to put that together. Bradshaw could not stop laughing. It was so funny. Yeah, Ro well, right. Ross is hilarious. Yeah, anyway. Ross... Ross is... Ross sauce. I, I honestly, I think that Orlando is, is just going to fall in love with Ross Paget. I mean, he's just an easy guy to like, and he is just such a unique... He's so animated. Smart, mm -hmm. funny, driven guy. I just, I can't wait. And, yes. De and Deb's the same way. You guys are going to fall in love with Deb. When you guys get to know the Deb that I know, you're going to love her. Yeah. Um, all right. Mm. That's, we're not talking about that. <clears throat> Do you ever make dessert? I'm not a big dessert maker. Tori likes to make dessert. Tori's a great baker. I'm not a very good baker. I don't have the patience for that stuff. Well, I think dessert making takes, like, I think we've talked about this patience. before. You're super fast yep. and you're super, I need to get this done. And yep. and, and, and and it just takes finesse to but, bake. I, and at the time, I almost hung myself when I was making those macarons. Macarons. I mean, I'm telling you, it was awful. Awful. I, I'm, I'm serious. I almost broke down when I was doing that. And, but I, I would choose the hardest possible thing to make. I'm so naive. It's great, though. But, but uh, I'm not, I honestly, and I don't eat a lot of sweets. I think that's what it is. I don't eat sweets, so I don't really make them. Yeah. I'm selfish that way. A little bit. It's okay, though. Mm. You made me a dessert. I will. You did. No, you did make me a dessert one time. You were surprising me. Oh, that cake thing I made that time. Um, that was good. You, you should open a restaurant in Baldwin. We are so excited to move to Baldwin. We're definitely, I think what we're going to probably do for a PTK thing is maybe we will meet at a couple of places down there. Um, They're great little places. Uh, they have a cigar bar. They have a yeah. ladies night. Um, there's a lot of places down there that we are going to kind of make our yeah, yeah. little stomp and then we'll start having, you know, meetups and everything there. A hundred percent. I'll tell you something else too real quick. Um. By the way, meetup is a Tom and Dan thing. Tom and Dan coin meetup. Oh, so oh, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not, sorry. I, I, I thought I heard it on another show. Yeah, no, I'm, thought... not gonna, I'm not going to bite it. The Tom and Dan, oh, is, okay. Tom and Dan started the word meetup, and that's a meetup thing. <laughs> so we're not going to use that. We're going to do something else. We're, gonna, we're not going to. We're not going to bite Tom and Dan style. I was uh, making yeah, whatever. Fun. Yeah. So, so the, <clears throat> the live PTK shows in 2018 are not going to be like we did before, where we show up and it's like a tasting pairing. It's not going to be like that anymore. We're going to do something way different. We're not going to require, you know, like $45 or $50 a person anymore. That just became mm -hmm. so unruly. Mm -hmm. We're going to do something that's seriously more accessible by everybody, and we're going to do fewer of them. We're going to get more vendors involved, and, and we're going to make them pay, just like Tom and Dan do. When you're going to come in, I want you guys to enjoy all the good stuff and it not cost you a fortune. I mean, that was a good try. We learned a lot from that time. And the beer companies that we started relationships with are still going to want to be involved, trust me. Yeah. But that's how we're going to do it. We're going to make it less cumbersome on you guys for money. They are telling you to blow your nose because the onions killed you. Um, that beer is so good. Is it? Oh, my gosh. Let's see. I'm going to sleep really well tonight. Um, Amy got a set of Hinkles for her wedding gift. Hinkles are great. Again, it's a really... And as I start her... I mean, there are pros that use Hinkles. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. It's good steel, man. <clears throat> That's um, all that matters. Take one of the beer. You good? Yeah. Oh, did we end up naming our little PTK man? Our little chef? Did we? 
No, I'm saying we should totally do a contest like that. Yeah, well, let's give something away. Let's do it. So we need names for our oh, yeah. PTK oh. chef. And wait till you see the new t-shirt Dory has coming out for our little PTK guy. It's really cool. It, I'm going to post it tomorrow. I'm going to post a sneak peek tomorrow. I saw the mock-up yesterday. It was really, really cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, I love it. It was a great idea. Let's see. They're telling me the faces to put on there. Oh, by the way, like and share the video, please, if you don't mind, guys. Like and share it. And thanks to Wassie's Meats in Melbourne for sponsoring Primetime Kitchen and the radio show part of it. These guys have, are an unbelievable partner. And by the way, I sent a shout out for guys who want to be part in 2018. I'm calling you back. we just been dealing with this house stuff. Yeah. we got like three people who want to be part of the show. Everyone from Landscapers. By the way, this is a show about cooking, but... People still watch, and people need services of all kinds. It doesn't have to be food or drink related. A landscaper said, hey, look, I'd love to be a part of that audience. Mike Oliver yeah. does real estate, for crying out loud, and he's part of the show. So don't think it has to be just this. We have a great audience that love to meet good people who provide great services or products. So it could be anybody. So um, I think what we're going to do also is we will be coming out with rubs and mixes next year. We are going to come out with a rub next year. That is a, a PTK goal. Yeah. yeah. Is to come out with a. With no, a... I've, I've already got one for sure. I know. I've, I've made a. And it's kind of a played. I say played, but it's just a real good. It's a kind of an herby pork rub. And I'll, I'll tell you who kind of made. I made it on a whim when we were doing the Bimbo Bakery rollout for the Artisano bun, that split roll, that incredible hamburger slash sandwich roll. Yeah. And I made a pulled pork. Uh, like a pork, a small shoulder, because I wanted to be able to put pulled pork on a, on a burger and make like a really unique burger. So um, I don't have any rub, and I was like, well, I'm going to just make a rub that I had a long time ago, and it was herby. It wasn't like paprika and brown sugar. It had that, but it was really a more earthy kind of savory. And man, Ron from Bimbo Bakeries loved it. Yeah. He's like, man, you've got to put that out. That's a crazy good rub. Yeah. And he cooks competition barbecue with a bunch of those guys over Bimbo, and I was really excited about that. But I love those herby yeah, it's going to be rub. Awesome. It was very, It was non-stereotypical barbecue, but it was delicious. So, do you have a good French onion recipe? French onion soup? Yeah. You want to know what the secret is of French onion soup? French right? onion. French onion. French onion. Here's the secret to good, a really, really good French onion soup. Mm -hmm. If you have the time to make your own beef broth yep. with uh, browning the bones and the vegetables, that's one of the keys. But the key is you have to really invest a lot of time in it. You have to cook those onions at so low for so long it should make you it, it should take you three to five hours yeah to it's make a good bowl rich. of french onion soup yeah and I you agree. have to use the right cheese you have to do all of that and you have to take your time that is a really unique dish and people bastardize it uh but really good french onion soup is impossible to um, you just can't replace they it. want to know what personality each of our kids have well, that's a good question um Baljum <laughs> instead of baldwin Baltim. That's funny. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's start with that. Three girls and a boy. Yeah. So my boy is... Gosh, how would you explain, Colby? No way really to do that. Uh, Colby is a really unique kind of... Uh, what, what am I looking to say here? I'm, I'm very... It's a... Colby is a, um, a like a like an oddly driven guy, and he is he's one of these guys that uh, uh, he likes to compete, and he hates being wrong, <laughs> and uh, just a real just a real competitor. I would say if I if I had to guess, he's like a competitor. It's kind of like you, right? Yeah, he's a lot like me. It's like he, <laughs> he hates losing. I hate losing. He hates losing. Yeah. And he'll make up excuses for it. He didn't mind. Uh, let's see, uh, Aubrey is the artistic one and to be honest with you she should be a fashion designer because my girl can walk into a goodwill and walk out looking like jackie o nobody on this planet can put together trash and make it look like it's chic like my daughter and she's the artistic one the ones i put the drawings up on my line that's ob uh she's also got a really unique personality and sense of humor uh kind of twisted uh, caitlin is caitlin is my kind of teddy bear sweet girl she's the athlete uh, and she's also turned into a really driven, goal-oriented, focused kid who is really just one of the sweetest, softest people and kindest people you'll ever meet. She is a really cool chick. Uh, and then my oldest, Taylor, um, is a petty thief. 
Tay is Tay is uh, uh, Taylor went into the Air Force on a whim. <laughs> it's true. Uh, Tay is it's like uh, Tay, she's the hardest worker. She, she's an extremely a hard worker. Incredibly hard worker. Um, uh, really unique person. She did uh, the uh, the um, uh, what was that baton stuff? Tay, what'd you do? What was that called? <laughs> Color guard. <laughs> Color guard at the highest level with Ly Lyman High School traveled all over the U.S. Yeah, uh, at championship levels doing that and took it real seriously. Uh, she's liked by all of her friends. She's got a great reputation. She got a great sense of humor. Loves good music. Loves good beer. And at 18 years old, decided she wanted to uh, to go do something with going to the military and serve her country. Uh, and I, I mean, I, I, I broke down in tears. It was the most. Came out of left field. Yeah, it was. It 